Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another webinar from A Place in the Sun as part of our month-long digital event. Today, we're going to talk about French property and have a snoop around four lovely properties uh, in France in the company of local estate agent, Joanna Leggett of Leggett Immobilier. How are you, Joanna? Hi, Andy. Very well, thank you. It's a little bit warm over here at the moment, so we're hoping we might get some rain next week because we haven't had any for ages, so the uh, garden's a little bit dry. <laughs> a bit dry. And you're down in the Dordogne, is that right? Yeah, in the Dordogne. I'm on the border of the Dordogne and the Charance. And every time I speak to you, you seem to have more offices uh, and more affiliate agents working with you across France. Just explain a little bit about the business and um, how, that, in fact, a lot of expatriate British people work with you, don't they, running um, estate agencies for you in different areas? Yeah, basically it started in 1998 where Trevor originally, my husband, started the company. It was very, very small then. There was a couple of agents. He basically did it because he used to renovate properties and sell, but he found it... He didn't get the service he was looking for from the French agents at the time. Um, and the, the internet then was very much in its infancy. So, and so for British buyers, they were going through sort of introductory agents in the UK that were then being passed over to French agents. Um, and the culture is very different. You know, if you want to come over for the weekend, you can't view between 12 and two because that's lunch and it's very important with French. So obviously it started, you know, within 10, I moved over in 2003 um, to work with Trevor in the agency. And by about 2008, we had about 55 agents and maybe four offices. Um, but since then, with the help of the internet and, and you know, 80% of searches now and researches are done online, um, you know, it's opened up a, a whole new world. Um, so all of our agents live and work in France and we sort of strategically built out. So we started in the Dordogne, um, but now we cover nearly all areas of France, whether it's up in the north, in part of Calais, Normandy, Brittany, all the way down to the south of France, the Languedoc Roussillon, um, the PACA region, Provence, Alp Côte d'Azur, and into the Alps, we also cover the Centre region. So we've sort of grown from, in 2008, we had about 55 agents. We've now got about 650 agents all across France. Um, we've got 14, 15 coming up regional offices. Um, we found you don't really need high street offices because the properties, France is huge and the properties could be like an hour apart. So it's much better to meet the, the clients in a cafe, perhaps in the area of where the property is situated. So they get an idea of what the village life is like, what the, you know, the, the town may be like, etc. But we do have regional offices, you know, one in Nice, for example, we've got a few up here all over the country as well. And there's so many of you in the village that you're in in the door door and it's it's locally known as Leggett Land, is this right? Uh, yeah, it has actually become a bit like that. Uh, the original office is here, but, you know, going back when Trevor bought the properties 30 years ago, you know, you could pick up a monastery for 5,000 euros. Uh, so it's changed a little bit now. So he did buy all these sort of derelict buildings and... Um, as we've grown, we've sort of spread out into these buildings. So we have one of the buildings, one of the houses now is the whole of the IT department. Um, we've got a barn, which used to be the butcher's um, at the shop as well, which is now the marketing and um, training department. Um, we've got the monastery, which is our contracts department, and we've got a call centre department. So, uh, yeah, it has started to become a little bit like Leggett Land, as uh, people in the village will still call us. Um, but the good thing is, it's, you know, we're a mixture team. We're French and English, 50% French, uh, English, Dutch, German. So we have speakers of all nationalities. So we can help um, in any way, with, whether that's with translations or for those that don't speak French. We've got, you know, a wealth of uh, different languages in head office, which is good. So we're a mini Europe legged land. <laughs> and because you're not busy enough, you just recently opened a restaurant. <laughs> Well, that was Trevor's um, want of having good food next door. So um, we transformed this old sort of beautiful building, actually, with a lovely carrelage flooring, the old stone floor. Um, and we had Reza, who came and uh, who's the celebrity TV chef, who came and opened it for us. Um, and so it's sort of a little bit different other than French food in, in the village. So now we have a sort of a legged restaurant. It's called Le Cluso after the caves that are in the village as well. It's named after the caves. But yes, fantastic. 
and so quite, a, quite a quite a diversified uh quite a diversified business and you've been out um filming we're going to see a couple of films of properties later on you've been out filming a property this week i believe yeah i was out filming in santa million which is um it's not on the website yet it should be edited this week a uh, beautiful chateau. It used to be an old, um, you know, vineyard. It would have been by. It's you know surrounded by Santa Million um, vines, which are you know Santa Million is one of my favourite wines. It's like a stone's throw from Santa Million, which is the medieval village, which is beautiful. Um, yeah, so it's quite nice for me to actually get out and see some of the properties myself um, and get involved with that, which which I've been doing this week. Although I nearly melted, it's been so hot over here. I think it's about 36 degrees when I was there uh, yesterday. Wow. Well, if you uh, anybody out there has a question for Joanna, if you click on the Q&A icon, I will put that question to her. We did have a French property masterclass, which Joanna took part in, along with some other exhibitors of ours. That was last Saturday. And all those recordings are now on our event website, which is up here. And you can go on there and watch the webinars about uh, the buying process, getting a mortgage, relocating to France, uh, Brexit and residency. All those sorts of issues were covered in detail. But if you have a question around any of those today, then just pop it on the Q&A and we'll see how we get on for time. So four properties today, Joanna, uh, two uh, we're going to be looking at images and two we're going to be looking at films. Let's just... Um, set the scene for what we're looking at this afternoon. So the four properties we have for you today are, uh, the first one is in a place called, let's test my pronunciation, chartres sur cher Whereabouts is that one, Joanna? Um, well, that's kind of in the centre of France. It's where the two rivers meet, the Loire um, uh, River and also the Cher River. Um, so it's very, fairly central. It's very easy to get to. You can drive to it in a day. Beautiful countryside. It's very, very good value for money there. So you'll get a nice big property um, with lots of land um, and, and, you know, lovely weather. It's sort of halfway down. It's sort of in the middle of France as such. Um, the middle of France is probably the most cost effective area in the cruise, for example, which is slightly lower. You'd be looking at around 63,000 for a three bedroom house. Um, the one we'll be looking at today is uh, 99,000 euros and it is a three bedroom house as well. OK, Isn't let's it? jump onto that one. then. So that's the principal reason uh, you wanted to show this as an example of, I guess, value for money. I mean, that is a lot of property for 99,000 euros, isn't it? Yes, it's a, it's a big house. It's got a plot size of 770 square metres. It's got three bedrooms. Um, it's situated in the village, so you can walk into, you've got your boulangerie, your bakers, etc. It's got um, a convertible loft. The loft is quite big with really nice high ceilings, so sometimes the beams are way too low to convert. Um, but as we go along, you will see that's one of the bedrooms there. Um, and another. So you can see the loft size there, That's that would make a really, really nice big spacious, perhaps two or three bedroom um, house. And it's a really nice shape, the roof there, as you can see, um, which is quite nice. Uh, it's got stone barbecue, it's got a chicken house, a tool shed. Um, you can see that the decor inside probably could do with updating. It's perfectly habitable, so you could move into it straight away and just, you know, somebody is actually living in it at the moment, as you can see, um, and then you can put your own mark on it. So you could obviously decorate it in whatever style you want. Um, it's very, very tidy. It's got beautiful gardens. You've got outbuildings, again, that you could um, convert. It's five minutes to the Canal de Berry and the River Cher, which is really, really good for fishing. So if you like fishing, um, you can get a license locally at the post office. Um, or any of the local, the local mayors, et cetera, and you can go along and fish there as well. So really, really nice, um, nice sized village house as such in a nice uh, area. And um, what size plot did you say that was? It's 770 square meters. Wow. So it's a nice big garden. You can see a lot of it in, in that photograph there is laid to lawn. You've got some gravel. You've got the steps going up. So you've got a third, you know, it's three levels that the property there. So you've got the cellar space underneath. Um, you've got uh, three good sized bedrooms on the first floor. 
the kitchen, although maybe a little bit dated, may need some updating. It is well equipped with a ceramic hob, dishwasher, full range of units. That's all included in the price. Um, and upstairs, you have three good sized bedrooms on the first floor and a bathroom with a shower and a separate WC. Um, and of course, the attic, which we saw earlier, um, yep. is just flying out to be renovated. I mean, it would make a lovely, great big family home with a good sized garden as well. Under the house, it's a fully sized basement and it's got a wine cellar, a boiler room and a utility room as well. We all need a wine cellar. Do you have any idea what this is? That looks like some sort of old mangle for drying clothes by the looks of things. I'm not quite sure. Or it's some, a, an interesting piece of machinery, whatever it is. Yeah, so, um, a nice decorative piece for the garden. You might notice at the back there, they've also got a summer kitchen. Um, so they've put a kitchen out that you can actually have a barbecue and etc. out in the garden. They built a summer kitchen there. There's also a really large garage, so if you want to store classic cars, old cars or cars, you do have a nice big size garage there. Or even a lock up and leave if you were going to be using it as a holiday home um, and you want to keep a car in France, because it's always better to have a French, you know, French registered car in France, particularly when we come out of Europe, because obviously we don't know what's going to happen with car licenses, etc. And so to have a good French car locked up, lock up and leave in the garage is always a good idea as well. Um, now, apparently the garden has a well with a functioning hand pump, so I'm wondering if that was the mangle thing that we saw, not quite sure, but it does actually have a well with a hand pump, so somewhere in there, which is brilliant, because if you have a source in the garden, you're not paying for water, um, so, you know, for watering the garden, putting a sprinkler on, etc., um, it's always good to have a source in your garden, and a lot of French rural countryside properties do have this. Well, the wonderful nature of the immediacy of something like this webinar is Sylvia Wilson has messaged in to tell us it is a chaff cutter. Aha, uh -huh. well, thank you. So, Sylvia, Sylvia the next question is, what's chaff? I, I guess the wheat from the chaff, is that is that right? <laughs> um, maybe you can um, elucidate further on that, Sylvia, but thank you. Thank you for your input. We do appreciate that. Joanna, what, give us an idea of purchase costs in France then that would be associated with the property. So this is 99,000 euros. Yes. Um, what includes... sort of percentage would you budget for your for your taxes and legal fees and that sort of stuff? Well, the 99,000 euros is including the agency fees, um, which are paid by the seller. So they're inclusive of that. Um, so you need to take off those agency fees and um, I'm not sure quite what the percentage is, but it would basically be, um, you'd be looking at adding on perhaps between six and 8% uh, for the notary fees. And that includes all your stamp duty, it includes all of the taxes because basically the notaire is a tax collector. They're totally neutral. They can work for the buyer and the seller. Um, and their fees, 80% of that fee goes back to the government, which is all the taxes, land registry, et cetera, paid, and the other 20% goes to them for their work. Um, depending on the area, the notaire's fees vary very slightly. We usually say maximum it's going to be 8% on the price of the property. And that, generally speaking, is if you're, the client is getting a mortgage where there might be slightly more work to be done by the notaire. Um, and registry, et cetera, they're not getting a mortgage. It can be it can be slightly cheaper. Okay. And David Wilson's asking about um, the cost of a survey in France. Is that something that your buyers typically do? I know um, um, it's less common in somewhere like Spain, but we do it all the time in the UK. What's the situation yeah, in France? Well, in, in France, the French don't do surveys at all. They have the diagnostic test done, which they which is the law. Um, that includes um, termites to make sure there's no termites. Very rarely do we find properties with termites these days. Uh, if you if you do find termites, so you can withdraw from the sale and there's no penalty clause whatsoever. It also checks for asbestos um, to see if there's any asbestos on any of the buildings. That's not a reason to pull out from the sale, but it's just to make you aware where the asbestos is if you need to remove it. There's also an electrical test which is done to check the electrics and a report will be drawn up. So if there is a lot of you know, things that need work, it might be a negotiation in the price um, to bring that down for the work to be done. But again, it's not a reason to pull out from the set, it's just to make you aware of the work that needs doing. 
Then there's lead for lead paint. It's usually found in old shutters or old pipes in the loft, things like that. Again, it's just to make you aware so that if you are removing this or sanding it, that you, you're aware it's lead and you need to wear a mask, etc. Um, and then there's the septic tanks, the FOSS report. Um, obviously, the laws change all the time, and so you have to make sure that the FOSS or the septic tank is up to European standards. Um, if it's not, again, it's not a problem. It can either, if, if we already know it's not, we will make the buyer aware of this and say, you know, the price has been reduced accordingly, and we've had some quotes in from local um, experts, and this is how much it's going to cost to do, and you can get your own quotes as well. Um, if it hasn't been done, you know, in some cases it's an inheritance and the house has been empty, we need to get that report done, and then we can find out, you know, actually it doesn't conform. What that means then is the buyer has to sign to say at the notaires when the final act is done that they realise it doesn't conform and they have 18 months to make it conform. Um, but this is quite important. For example, where I live, um, my house is built on rock. So to put a new fossil in is quite a big job because you are going to have to use quite heavy machinery to dig the hole. If you're not on rock, then it's quite easy and simple and it can cost anything from sort of three 3,000 to maybe 9,000, depending on the size of the property, because it depends on how many bathrooms you have to how many, uh, to the size of the FOSS that you need. So all of those five tests will be done. Um, and then the reports given to the buyer um, at, the, at the exchange of contracts on the compromis de bond. So you can discuss this with the buyer and see if there is any more negotiation in price, if things have been highlighted that, that, that haven't been highlighted before. But as far as the survey goes, because that's all the French rely on, um, if you wanted a survey, of course there are surveyors. They're generally British um, in the area. Uh, your okay. agent or, or you, know, you can go online and you can research and find a surveyor that will come and do a survey for you. Um, and this is quite common as well. Um, this can be done, but you can't make a property subject to survey like you do in the UK. So you would need to have your survey done before you put your offer in. Um, which is a good idea as well, because once the survey's been done, if it highlights anything and it's you know not the same things as the as the five reports that have to be done are done, um, it does give you a little bit more negotiation and a bit more peace of mind. I mean, realistically, for example, the house I'm in is like 600 years old. You know, if it was going to fall down, I think it would have done by now. But there's no signs of cracks or anything like that. So it really depends. If, if for peace of mind and you want a survey, it can be done. Um, if okay. not, the French way and, and have the five reports done. Okay, thank you for that, Joanna. Dawn Kamani just asks, asks again, I think you did mention it, what's the square metrage of the of the house itself, Joanna? Um, at the moment, because we don't include the, the sous-sol, the underneath part, um, or the loft, so you'd be looking at 103 square metres for the habitable space at the moment. Oh, I see, not including the, the basement and the, and the loft there, yeah. 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 OK. And I think we've um, we've triggered off a bit of a row, actually, on uh, just exactly what this is. So uh, we won't dwell on it any further because it's getting quite uh, animated out there. But um, uh, somebody's definitely, definitely insistent it's a chaff cutter. Somebody else says it is a pump for a well. Definitely not a chaff cutter. Well, because it does describe that it has a, a well. Um, and it does pump up water for the garden. Right. So I'm, I'm thinking it is actually well. Okay, well, um, whatever your view, it's fine. We won't, we won't fan the flames of that uh, argument that's going on on the, uh, on the messages there. But um, okay, lovely. Thank you for that, Joanna. Whereabouts are you taking us for today's second property? Um, so now we're going across to the Cote d'Amour, which, which is in Brittany. Um, this actually is a really, really lovely area. It's not far from the coast. It's quite close to Wren as well. Um, again, the beaches in this area are absolutely stunning. We have a lot of French that have holiday homes in this area um, because you've got the sort of pink granite coastline. So the granite there is very pink, beautiful beaches, beautiful beaches all the way across. Um, this property is fairly central. So again, um, you know, with, with the situation as it is at the moment, a lot of people are looking for holiday homes or homes that they can drive to quite quickly. Um, and with this one being in Brittany, you know, you can come into San Malo or you can come into any of the uh, ports 
um, in the north or the west of France and be there within a couple of hours. So it's, you know, it's a great location um, for a holiday home. And this is your classic longere, if you just explain what type of building that, that is. Yeah, longere, as you can see, is like a long house, which is what that one is. You, you'll see the typical um, style for Brittany there, where you've got the slate roofs and the granite stone walls, slightly pink because that's the area. Um, this house is actually a four bedroom house, but it could be split into two because it actually does have two bedrooms either side and it does have two kitchens. Um, so if you wanted to live in the house, you know, half of the house yourself and rent out the other house, so you've got a little bit of income if you're going to be living there permanently, or you want to have it for guests, friends and family, um, so they've got their own space and you've got your own space, that house really leans itself to that. Um, it has a first floor, as you can see where the little windows were on the top. Um, so you've got the main house with a back kitchen, large living room, dining room. And on the first floor, you've got two bedrooms um, with ensuite bathrooms. So they both have en suites, those bedrooms. Loads of character in these type of properties as well. Brittany is full of characters. So you get really lovely old stone walls and beams, etc. as you can see there. Really nice old fireplaces. Um, you've also in the garden, this has actually got quite a big plot of land, this property as well. I don't know if you've got any of the garden shots towards the end there, but that actually has 5,357 square meters of land. So it's a really, really lovely plot, which means if there are two families living there or you've got guests or, or you want to rent half the house, there's plenty of space to separate off the gardens as well. Um, this house has had its diagnostic test done. Um, all the windows are, are double glazed, so it's really, really good for um, heat, efficiency, etc. It also has no lead paint and no asbestos. It's got a well with a pump. Well, I haven't seen the one in the picture yet, but I'm sure we'll find it at some stage. It does have a well there. Here we it's, go. Um, you found it, yeah. And that's, that's, definitely, that's definitely a well, not a chaff cutter, yeah? <laughs> it's definitely a proper well yes yeah, so that you can um obviously with that size garden as well with the dry weather that we've been having um you know having a source in the garden is is a, is brilliant um it's in a hamlet um so it's near to uh Guriac, which is about 10 kilometers away which would be the biggest town nearby um, it's got a greenhouse, it's got a vegetable garden, it's got a chicken coop, it's got about several different types of um, fruit trees in the garden. Um, and it's, you know, it literally is, uh, you know, to open the door and move straight in. There's probably very little work to be done there. And as you can see from the gardens, they're absolutely stunning and beautifully maintained. Um, so it's a really, really nice property. Um, and that property is on the market at 208,000 euros. It's about 195,000 um, pounds, but it is a big plot and it is a nice big property. Um, so again, you know, what would you get for 195,000 in the UK these days? Not, not no, anywhere near as a large property as that. Yeah, this just encapsulates what a lot of people dream of when they are thinking about a, a property in rural France with the beams and the stone. It really is... Uh, it really is lovely fireplace there with a wood burning stove. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that ticks lots of boxes. Exactly, and you've got the lovely wooden parquet floorings on the floor. Um, you know, it's, it really is a it, it's the sort of typical chocolate box property that you would get in Brittany, and it's really tastefully done as well. You know, if you look at the shutters, the colour of the shutters, etc., it's really really pretty. You've got gravelled courtyards, you've got lawn area. Um, the garden's really mature and that's really nice because a lot of the French don't tend to be into gardens as much as the British are. Um, so you might find that, you know, when you, when you do find a, an old French house, they may not have a lot of plantings done. So, so to have a garden that's got so many more mature trees, fruit trees and beautiful planting already, is, you know, that saves a fortune in itself. And a question in from Jane Hallhead. She asks about the diagnostic report that you referred to, Joanna. Is that, that that's provided by the seller, uh, she asks, and is it provided, is it available in English or is that a service that's provided? 
We can. Um, as an agency, we try, we have an in-house contracts team. And for most of the things that we do, uh, for example, a compromise de vente, which we use the standard FNAM, which is like the governing body for estate agents, we have all of those translated into English for you um, so that you understand what you're signing. We can also take take it through with you on the phone, etc. if you're in the UK and we're in France. Um, yeah, usually with the diagnostic report, we will get, um, you, we wouldn't probably have it, the whole thing translated unless you specifically ask for it. And there may be a small charge for that, but the summary of really what's wrong with it, we can get translated into English. Everything else is obviously not necessary, but you will have the full report. So, you know, if it says there's no asbestos, it would, we will say the property has no asbestos and you'll get a summary report on the front of all of the reports that are given out. And again, in the, um, when you speak, uh, when we're doing the compromis de vente, those reports have to go with it. And that's the law. So, you know, you would receive copies of those as well. And just on the purchase process in France, I don't know if there's a French equivalent for the word gazump, uh, but we have a, a comment, not so much a question from an anonymous uh, viewer out there, who's just saying, well, I, I'd like to let people know about the importance of getting the offer signed straight away. We've just missed out on a property lost to a higher bidder. Uh, after the offer was only accepted verbally, we spent two months looking for the perfect home and found it only just to lose out. Well, sorry for your frustration. Is that something that you yes, experienced? I mean, it's a bit of an English plague more than um, well, than in other countries. Yeah, I mean, it really depends. If you see, a, the, these days are very, very different. The market is massively strong in France at the moment. So whereby a house might sit on the market for six months to a year, which has been the case, you know, in past years. However, now the property market is really strong. I mean, we've had our busiest month in July that we've had for sales in 22 years. Wow. Um, the domestic market is moving really quickly. Interest rates for mortgages are massively low. Um, so the French are buying everything. Countryside properties have become more in demand since obviously the COVID situation, whereby people are thinking, do we really want to be cooped up in an apartment in Paris? Um, perhaps when we could be on the outskirts of Paris and buying a country home. Um, so country, although they're not going up in price, which is a good thing, they are more in demand. So there will probably be more buyers for each property. The good thing is, though, is that in France, once the, we always ask, the, or all agents will ask the buyer to sign the compromis de vente first, then it's sent to the vendor to sign. The reason this happens is because once the vendor has signed, he cannot pull out the contract. So you can't get gazumped after the vendor has signed. Um, if he does pull out the contract, he's liable. He can't sell the house again without paying that buyer who'd signed the company a 10% deposit or a 10% fee for doing so. So it's pretty safe. But if you haven't signed the company de vente, then nothing is signed until it's signed. I mean, we we were able to turn around, generally speaking, if we have all the paperwork in place, we can turn around a compromise de vente in a few days. Um, so if you love the property, you can sign an offer to a shack, which basically is a, a sign I want, would like to buy the property. That can go then to the vendor so that they know that you are a serious buyer. Um, and hopefully that will mean that we can get the company to vent drawn up or the notaire can get it drawn up. We work with the notaires um, and it can be signed in a few days. Once that vendor signed, you're safe. Um, then you've got a 10 day cooling off period. So if you decided to pull out of the property, you still can in that 10 days. Uh, the vendor can't. Once the vendor signed, you can't pull out from the property at all. So that's the sort of way the system works. In the UK, it's quite different because you could complete and exchange contracts on the same day. Um, so right up until that last minute, you could still lose the property. Whereas in France, once the compromise signed, it could take three more months for it to complete, but you're completely safe once the compromise de vente has been signed. Okay, well, let's hope um, that that viewer finds another perfect property sometime soon. Right, property number three. This is my favourite. I love this one. And it's a film rather than images. Where are we going now, Joanna? Are we doing the one in the Charente? We're doing the one in the Charente, yes. Uh, down in Angoulême. Um, is that the one we're doing next? Yeah. yeah. Oops. Oops. Um, this is an absolutely amazing property, and this really shows the true value of what you can get in France compared to what you can get in the UK. 
Um, most of us with a three bedroom home in the UK will probably be selling it for maybe three to 500, if not more. In London, you could be paying 600 to a million for a two bedroom flat. Um, this property we're about to show, uh, which Trevor, that my husband is going to talk you through the property, has been completely renovated throughout. So it's been completely redecorated. Uh, the, the shutters have been painted, the walls have been painted, etc. Um, it's unbelievable value for money. Um, we've had an offer on it, but it, nothing has been signed as yet. Um, but it just shows you that there are some bargains like this um, and these properties, not that they come up every day, but they do come up uh, absolutely unbelievable value. So I love, shall let you play the video, Andy. Okay, so this is in the Charente. It is, what did we say, 480,000 euros, about 430 odd thousand pounds. This is That's quite a long cool. film. It's eight minutes, but it's, uh, it's worth watching. Here we go with Trevor. Right, today we're uh, in Charente, we're just north of Rouillac. Uh, this is a typical uh, Maison Viticole. It doesn't get any more typical than this. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's a grand house with grand openings. It's beautiful. It's got light right through the house. It's exactly the kind of house. I mean, these buildings are probably some of the most beautiful homes in the world. It's a, you know, we need to have a look inside and you'll see the dimensions. The rooms are between 40 and 50 square meters. The main living dining area is about 70 square meters. And this was built mid 19th century. Uh, on the base of a property that was here from the 16th century. And the Pigeonnier dates back to that. It's cracking. The, the courtyard's closed, so it's like a fortified closed courtyard, typical of this region in the Sharon. Some people used to say that that was because it was, a, it was invaded from both sides, from the English from the north and, and the Arabs from the south. So, <laughs> so that's why they built their houses with great big closed courtyards to keep everybody out, keep themselves safe. But it gives you a lot of privacy in modern times. It's beautiful. This is just one of the outbuildings. But the outbuildings are a lot older than the main house. The main house was completely restored in the 19th century, which is a while ago still. But the pigeonier of this part of the building here, with the stonework, the cut stonework around the door, is probably quite a lot older. There's parts of this building, uh, 16th century, 16th, 17th, 18th, and the big restoration took place in the 19th century. But it's lovely because there's little bits all over the place, like the cut stone around the window. And this barn uh, would make a fantastic couple of massive sheets. You could get two or even three large sheets in this building. Planning permission has been obtained already as planning permission for the barns at the back to be converted into another house as well, another house and a cottage. Uh, there's also a little hot, a little, a little house here with a baker's oven inside it. We'll have a look in a minute. Okay, so this is one of the old uh, farm outbuildings. So this would have been obviously domestic workers' cottage. Um, it hasn't been touched. It's Don Sanju. But again, we can make another G in here. There's a floor upstairs, which is a bit rotten, but there you go. But uh, I don't think we'd have any problem getting planning permission to convert this. That's a grand staircase. Here we are in the main house. Now this is the 19th century restoration. You know, the cement tiles in the hallway, they're in perfect condition. Uh, cast iron radiators everywhere. The floors are in perfect condition. Literally, all that's been done to this has just been completely cleaned up and painted, ready for the new owner to put his stamp on it. So the living room proportions are pretty much. I mean, that's a lovely thing. You've got three big windows. So 
So this is an, uh, another couple of rooms. What personally, what I would do here is take this partition down and make this into an even bigger room. We've got three windows on this side, two on this side, and it's glorious. So at the back, we're elevated, so you've got nice views across open countryside and the lake at the back here. It's beautiful, really nice house. Fireplace from an 18th century manor, something slightly older than the renovation. And the reclaimed terracotta tiles, which are beautiful, they are the real old terracotta tiles that have been put in by the previous owner. Uh, the previous owner did a lot of work to the place. So we're, we're about 35 minutes from Angoulême, but we are closer to the coast than, uh, than the other side of Angoulême. So in a position quite convenient, we've got the TGV 35 minutes away, um, and we're about an hour, hour and 10 minutes from the beaches of West France, Côte Sauvage, Wales. So, so at the end of the house, we've got a, a separate granny flat, so it's completely, completely independent. I mean, if you wanted to, you could make this into a, a flat with its own entrance because there's another door that is currently blocked out. There's a door here. So there's a bedroom there, there's a bathroom here. Massive walking shower. So it was really well built anyway, because the, the cherry floors downstairs the staircase in Elm, and then the floors upstairs here are in great condition, and these are poplar. Nice big wide poplar boards, it's beautiful. So the house has got six bedrooms, three bathrooms, and four reception rooms, but the rooms are huge, absolutely huge. Uh, the smallest bedroom, which one, is about 25 square metres, and the biggest bedrooms are 40 square metres. So, this is the front garden. You can see there's a wall all the way around the garden that goes right the way around the whole property. Now, if you had to build the wall today, I dread to think what it would cost. And it's all in great nick, because somebody had the thought to cap all of the walls properly with tiles, so the walls haven't been damaged with water infiltration. Chapeau. So there's a stream running through the bottom here. Where the stream was, there's a lake at the end, but the lake seems to have been leaking for a while, so it needs to be reinstated or not, depending on whether you prefer a stream or a lake. But there was once here, there's a pond just at the bottom of the garden, which is uh, obviously at some point for breeding fish for food. And then at the back there, there was a big lake, but I think that's been drained out for the moment. It's a beautiful bit of land though, because there's birds everywhere. It's lovely. It's that's what we call a Chantay's porch and the reason for that <laughs> it's like a fortress so you've got the two doors either side this one's a fake door the, the real door on the right and the grand the great big gate covered it's pretty grandiose isn't it it's lovely and then we've got this beautiful cut stone wall all the way around that goes right around the property right so we've got this exclusively on our website so if you'd like to have a look just click on the link and go through fantastic i don't think any property i've ever lived in i've had to consider whether i want a stream or a lake Joanna. Yeah, I know. It's just it's such an amazing, I mean, that just shows those type of properties don't come up all the time. Um, and when you, you, you know, they do, they are really little treasures. Um, you're having the, the pond, the lake, you could extend it. That property actually has 24,100 square meters of land as well. So it's, wow. um, I've been there myself. It's got a huge orchard through the back of one of the barns. It's got land all around it. You know, it really is an absolute stunner. 
Um, and it's so, you know, literally ready to move into, you know, all painting has been done, et cetera. It's all completely clean and ready to go. Um, but it's a big property, you know, it's a lot to look after. And if you bear in mind, I think it's, it's 485,000 euros. So it's what, about 450,000 pounds. Like you're you're um, in the currency business, Andy, or the currency rate is at the moment. Um, but again, you know, it's a, it's a one bedroom flat in London and you can yeah. get it. You, you wouldn't be able to build it for what it costs these days. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, particularly that wall that Trevor was pointing out. Uh, we have an interested watcher out there who said he's been on your website, he's been looking at this property, but it says that it's actually under offer. So the principal reason we've showcased this today is just to show the value that you can get. There is actually somebody pretty close to signing on, on this property, isn't there? Yeah, there is. I mean, as soon as it's signed, it will come off the website. We do uh, keep it up so that people can note their interest in the property. However, we won't show it because there is, a, you know, there is an offer on the table. But if for whatever reason that falls through, then obviously that message will, will disappear and it will go back on the market. Once it's signed, it will come off. But, you know, because obviously the integrity to the buyer that has put the offer in, obviously we have marked it as under offer, but people can note their interest in case it falls through. Right. Um, Ian Pearson's asking about, um, I know you advertise on our website, placeinthesun.com, but you have your own uh, web, active website. He's asking, can you, can you sort of open an account on your website and save properties into an account? Can you, can you do um, that facility? Well, we're just, we're just actually in the process. We've got testing going on at the moment, this actual current week, where we're using a lot of agents all across the country uh, with a new database system. At the moment, we have an in-house um, sales support team. So when you go on the website, we've got sort of, I don't know, 15,000 properties on there, which we've all listed by our leg agents. Um, you can register with our call center team, our sales support team. What they'll do is they'll register you in the client database. They'll take all of your criteria, exactly what you're looking for. And then what will happen is if a new property comes on the market that matches that criteria, it will automatically send it to the client. If um, anything is reduced in price that now falls into the new price bracket, that will automatically get sent out to the client. At the moment, there's no sort of shopping uh, trolley thing, you know, that you can keep the properties yeah. in. But that is coming with the new system and that should be over the next few weeks that facility will be available. But what we try to do is make specific searches. So by talking to our sales support team, we have one person looking after you um, and they will deal with all of the agents in all of the areas that you're looking for. So you don't have to speak to, you know, 20 agents or five agents or depending on how wide the area is. And then when you are ready to come out and make a shortlist and view some properties, then that sales support person will help you make an inventory, an itinerary, should I say, and work with all the agents so that all the appointments are all sort of put. France is massive. You don't know how far apart different properties are or how long it's going to take round. So she or he will liaise with the agents and then put that sort of itinerary together for you. Okay. Pamela Taylor's asking about relationships with the local mairie, with the local uh, town hall or, or mayor. Often when we're talking about French property and moving to a, a, a small hamlet, um, it's always said, oh, you go along and you have a word with the mayor. It sounds terribly um, kind of sociable and quaintly old fashioned in some ways. Um, she's asking, would you, is that the, would you need to approach the mayor if you're looking to do uh, some improvements to the property? Um, well, they don't, they don't sort of have the building control that we have in the UK. So if you wanted to take out a non-supporting wall, et cetera, or you wanted to go up into the loft, you can do that. Where you need planning permission is if you make new openings. So if you put new windows in, enlarge the windows, put new doors in, you will need planning permission for that. And that is above the Mary that would you'd have to go to actual planning departments um, to do that. The mayor sort of controls the whole of the commune, so it's really important that you do go and introduce yourself. You need to do this as well, because um, particularly for the post, um, because if they don't know you're living there and a letter gets sent to you, unless you've notified your local mayor and notified the post office that that's your name and that's the house you're in, they won't know and the post will get sent back. It's quite, it is like going back in time, um, quite some time before me, obviously, but they, it is quite far back. and. Um, 
the local mayor, particularly in rural communities, um, if you're in the countryside and you're in a little commune, you know, it's really important to invite them. Invite them over for the apero, you know, invite them over for a drink. They're generally very friendly. A lot of the things that they can agree on le on that level, you know, so if you want to do, you want to change of use or things like that, they, they can agree that on local level. Um, and, it's, and it's really just good to be involved in the commune because you will meet the local mayor at every event, at every social dinner, um, you know, so it is good to go and introduce yourself as soon as you're there. And also, if you want to find out what's going on in the commune, you know, is there going to be, if, you, if you're worried about building, uh, you know, is anything going to be built in that field over there? You can go into the local Mary and they will have a plan for the next 10 years, the plan to solve. And you can speak to them. Some of them will speak English. If not, take somebody who speaks French if you don't speak French. And they'll be able to show you exactly what's going on in their own commune. And also bearing in mind, they're really open to you converting buildings because it's local tax and the local tax goes to the commune. So the more work you do, the happier they are because obviously <laughs> you'll get more tax, they'll get more tax as such. Okay, well, let's go and take a look at property number four, which, come on, let's admit it, this is out of most people's price range, but we've added this one for the sake of the story, haven't we, Joanna? Yeah, well, this is just a, it's, um, you can take a, a morning dick in Lake Le Mans, it's near Geneva, it's a beautiful um, apartment house, it's a house actually, um, the, it is 2.7 million euros, so of course it's not in everybody's budget, um, however, it has an interesting story, so I thought it might be interesting to see if you're a horror film fan or a horror, horror novelist fan, this is actually where Mary Shelley lives. And um, she actually, it was on a stormy day in this house. I'm going to let the agent tell the story. We'll have a look at the property first. You will see how and where the Frankenstein story came from. Welcome to the stunning medieval village of Nelnier, right on the shores of Lac Clément, or as we know it in English, Lake Geneva. What's fantastic is that this house has been completely renovated, but whilst maintaining all of its original charm. The terrace of this wonderful property actually extends over the lake. So you're right above the water with the beautiful swans and ducks and all the boats right in front of your eyes as you sip your morning coffee or enjoy an aperitif after work. But for all of its beautiful views and top-class renovations, this house is definitely not just a pretty face. It also has a very intriguing history. The writer Mary Shelley in 1816 was doing a tour of the lake with her husband, Percy Shelley. They were staying with Lord Byron across the border in Switzerland when the three of them had a competition one night when there was a huge storm on the lake. They all tried to come up with the most scary horror story possible. And that, in a nutshell, is how Mary Shelley came up with the idea for Frankenstein. And as she continued to tour the lake with her husband, she stayed right here in this very house, which at that point in time was an auberge. So she wrote several pages, at least, of the book in this very property. What a wonderful story. 
and the chance to own a real piece of history. And there's a secret treasure hidden on the other side of the small footpath. It's this beautiful garden, which is such a great plus in this small medieval village where most of the properties don't really have much outdoor space. be a small village but it's got a big heart and a lovely community which is a fantastic mixture of French families who've been in the village for generations and newcomers like myself who've come here and settled from all corners of the globe. So not quite the scale of the first property, Joanna, but that one's all about the location, isn't it? Yeah, of course. You're in a you're in a very expensive area on Lake Geneva. You've got uh, it's quite a high end market. You've got the yachts and everything that you can see there. Uh, that house is actually built over four floors, and it actually does have an internal elevator as well to get to the top. Um, so yeah, it is again. But you know, even if you looked at 2.7 million in the UK you still get a really quite fair sized property for that. That property is, is purely because of the location and the orts of Bois where it is and the fact that it is on the lake. Um, and of course it is a piece of history having the, um, the Mary Shelley connection and the Frankenstein story on both. It might be a little bit scary staying there perhaps. <laughs> and the, the woman presenting that property, that's an example of somebody, um, a, a, a non-French national who works with you and manages properties in a certain area on your behalf? Yes, exactly. I mean, we have so many different nationalities of agents. Um, we've got a lot of Dutch agents. Um, obviously, uh, she's English and has sort of moved into the area fairly recently. And years. So there's, we have all different nationalities. Um, everyone's bilingual, so they will be able to speak French and English. So if the vendor is French and you don't speak any French, our agent will be able to translate for you if you have questions for the vendor. Obviously, at the moment, um, we are asking vendors, because of the COVID situation, not to be present at the property. So we can relay questions afterwards because we're trying to, you know, with the security and safety measures to keep, um, you know, all the doors open and to try not to have as much contact with as, many, as least or few people as possible um, in the current climate. Um, but of course, you can go backwards and forwards with questions and our agents will have spent a lot of time with the vendor. They've all all the properties listed on our sites are, you know, the agent has been there, has spoken to the vendor, has listed it, has written those descriptions or videos or made the virtual tours as such. So they will be able to help. Okay, a number of questions coming in about uh, residency and Brexit deadline and how long you can spend in the country. Um, we did cover quite a bit of this last Saturday, Saturday the 12th of September in our property masterclass if you head on over to our event website on the hub this is where you, you will have signed up for today's webinar this is the one we're on at the moment the french property hunt with joanna um, and then down at the bottom of the page we will we will re reorder these at some point but they're all all the webinars that took place last saturday are all on here so we had a session on mortgage availability renovating a home uh, the purchase process we did a session on currency transfer about managing your holiday home and moving permanently to France and the tax and residency implications. And we also had a general catch up with all, our, all of our exhibitors in the final session of the day. Um, if you'd like to make contact with Joanna, 
you can head over to the Meet Our Exhibitors section and drop down to France, click on Legit, and that will bring up the Legit Immobilier page. Uh, there's some information about Joanna's business there. And if you'd like, like to book a Zoom call, just pick one of these slots or head, head forward to next week. If you prefer, pick a time, click on the time, put in your name and email address, and you need to tick that box, and then you book a meeting uh, with Legit, and um, that's all. That's all done and dusted. If you're not ready for a for a uh, a one to one Zoom meeting, then um, check out properties on the property carousel, and uh, you can message them on here. There's just a message box at the bottom, and, and of course you can. Can you share the screen? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My mistake. You'd think I've done enough of these now to be able to share the screen. And a colleague is shouting at me in the background. So this is this is our webinar page. And at the bottom of the webinar page are the sessions from Saturday. If you head over to the exhibitors area, meet our exhibitors and click on France, then you bring up the Legit page, Legit Immobilier, and you can book a meeting. I just booked a meeting there, but didn't uh, didn't have the courtesy to show you all how to do it. So uh, you can just book a meeting on there with Legit Immobilier, and you can message them down on the screen here. So that's where um, that's where Joanna's business is. Uh, that's how to make contact. And also, you might want to give out the URL for your for your website, Joanna, is that handy? Yeah, well, it's just um, legitfrance.com. Um, so it's quite easy, just legitfrance.com. Or if you, which is, as you can see, my name spelled behind L-E-G-G-E-T-T, -T, or frenchestateagents.com. We have two URLs. You can either come in on frenchestateagents.com or legitfrance.com. Fantastic. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, today, Joanna, what have you got planned with your weekend? Um, weekend off or busy working? Well, actually, tomorrow night we actually have wine tasting in the village. We have a sommelier that's coming in, especially with some new wines um, for us to try, obviously French. Um, so that will be uh, tomorrow evening. And tomorrow in the day, I've got a friend over, so we're going around the Bacons, um, looking for some little sort of antique finds that we can have, bargains, etc., and some of the charity shops as well. Very nice. Sounds fun. OK, well, thanks again for your time. Thank you, everybody. A healthy turnout this afternoon. Thank you for coming along uh, to this webinar. Uh, we do appreciate your interest and um, enjoy your weekend, too. So it's goodbye from me and goodbye from Joanna. Goodbye. Thank you.